I have learned much from this gentleman over the years. Uh, most recently, uh, if I ever go to Sri Lanka and I order chicken at a restaurant, make sure it's chicken that they actually bring to you. Uh, you can read about that in uh, his most recent book, uh, it's a memoir called Riding the Elephant. Uh, he's done so much. Of course, we remember him as the host of The Late Late Show on another network, which that seems like forever ago now because I haven't watched The Late Late Show since then. Can't wait to see Craig Ferguson back at the Egyptian Room in Indianapolis on September 17th. Mr. Ferguson, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm good, Raymond. How are you? I, you don't mind if I call you Raymond. I could shorten it to Ray, but I feel until we know each other better, I think Raymond or even Raymondo might be the way to go. Is that okay? I would be honored you call me anything if you want to call me Raymond. Usually the only uh, one, it pops up as Raymond on the Zoom because that's the way the company has it. Two, the right. only other person who calls me Raymond is my wife when she's pissed off at me. So. Yeah, but you know, we, you know what's weird? When my wife's pissed off at me, she also calls me Raymond. Which I don't understand. I don't understand. I have not been there, sir. I've, I've not, been, <laughs> not been to Scotland, so I would not be the reason for that. Um, well, but, you yeah. know, uh, it's funny. I The last time we spoke, I was at radio here in Indianapolis. The SoundCloud file that I listened to today before this interview said it was seven years ago, just before wow. another show at the Egyptian Room in Indianapolis. Yeah. So uh, a fair bit has happened since uh, 2015 for, for yourself. Yeah. Um, Do I have to cover all of that? Do no, I have to talk about all, whatever no, not, happened in the world between no, 2015 not, and now? No, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, but I do want to touch on one thing, though. And, and if, by the way, if, if you have not seen Craig's uh, series, Hobo Fabulous, about, I believe, your most recent tour in the United yeah. States for this one, uh, it's on Amazon Prime. It's well worth your time. Uh, but in, in that last episode, you said that... You never, you never say never, but you thought that was going to be it as far as touring. And yet, here you are. Yeah, you know what happened? I don't know if you know this, but in 2019, actually just the beginning of 2020, the world went into some weird, uh, well, I don't want to get into all that. But uh, I was at home for a long time and I thought, you know, I, I really feel like I should go and tour. And then my wife started calling me Raymond all the time. And I think it's time to get out. The joke itself does not exist. But the punchline exists, but it's good. It's such a good punchline. I think I should tell it to you so you know. The punchline of the joke is, what are you talking about? The first time he tried it, he was sick. The second time, his hat blew off. <laughs> <laughs> See? You didn't even hear the joke, and you're like, not bad, not bad. I missed it. I missed it. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, missed the, I missed doing the live shows, and I missed the travel, and I missed the vibe of it and i'm very glad to be back doing it again i just missed it and something else about the end of that show or something that we learned from hobo fabulous is yeah, the last time we spoke we talked about you being a u.s citizen uh you had written the book about becoming an american and and all that mm. went into that process and now you've moved back to scotland if you don't mind me asking why, why the move back uh, back home for you if you will well, it, uh, it isn't. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I do. I'm there a lot of the time and I have a house there. But I mean, look, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to the IRS, I haven't gone anywhere. I didn't even go to the end of the block. So, um, no, I'm still an American and I still spend a lot of time in America. In fact, you know, I'm, you know, we're just talking about maybe it's time to think about coming back again. We're not really sure. So uh, it's not I don't have a hard and fast rule about it. I went there. We went there because really we had been going there a lot for uh, for downtime and we wanted to spend more time there. Uh, and I like it there. I don't know if you know Scotland. It's a fantastic place. I love it. So I like going there. I, I'd love to go someday. Now, and then my wife it, would too. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's lovely. Well, you know what? Maybe maybe if you would surprise her with a trip there, you wouldn't hear Raymond quite so much. You I, might just hear Ray. That is the loveliest thing that you I, surprise does with a trip to Scotland. You'd yeah. be, be getting called Ray for a while, I think. I, I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, September 17th is when uh, Craig is at the Egyptian Room here in Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, it is a place that, uh, it, it was funny. I remember when we saw that show the first time and you came on stage, had a little bit of fun with the name, the Egyptian Room. I kind of find it funny too, but I, and I know it's because you know, that was once the Murat uh, Shriners Temple in Indianapolis is what that auditorium is or the, the entire building. So that that's, that's why it's called the Egyptian room. Just so we know. Yeah. I now have an Egyptian room in my house where I, uh, 
We have, but not contemporary Egyptian, ancient Egyptian. I go in there and I wear eye makeup and I uh, and I walk uh, in a certain fashion. Not not in any way. Well, I'm a little hieroglyphic in my in my setup. I I I'm fascinated by actually by ancient Egypt, and I always have been. So playing the Egyptian room is something that I remember very fondly. And and I like it very much. I love the decor. I I'm not in any way being dismissive of it. I I think it's really cool. And I think more places should have Egyptian rooms. My friend Karis, who is an Egyptologist, she calls me up from Egypt and she says, "We found this joke." And I was like, "Oh wow, that's great! Tell me the joke." So she you know she tells me the joke, but I, I don't speak ancient Egyptian. It was like I will owl guys with a dog's head. I'm like, <laughs> it's not that funny. Wow, I had no idea so many ancient Egyptians were here this evening. You mentioned something in the last show, I want to bring this up too, about people who think they are comedians, but they don't really do stand-up the way you always did stand-up, the way a lot of comedians were brought up doing stand-up. As you put it, they do five minutes on YouTube and they think they're a comedian uh, and <laughs> they really haven't put in uh, the work. And, and some other comic friends of mine, there's one who lives uh, here in central Indiana, Scott Long, and he's pretty much quit doing comedy clubs now because one, he makes more money doing corporate shows. Uh, but two, it's it, the comedy clubs here increasingly don't want your traditional stand up comedians. They're looking for celebrities. They're looking for YouTubers. They're looking for TikTok uh, celebrities. It's it's changed a lot over the years. I think it's OK. Things change. You know, I mean, I think, you know, what I I mean, I hate being held accountable for things I said. And I don't remember saying, <laughs> but um, I, uh, I I think that it's OK. The things do change and I don't want to be saying, oh, it was better in the old days. I, I it's a different way of doing things. If uh, if I was starting out today, I would totally be doing TikTok and YouTube. I, of course I would. I, I mean, it's what young comedians are doing and and they should. And things are changing because they should change and young people are making it different because that's what young people are meant to do. And I'm frightened of it because I'm old and, and young people should frighten me. And that's good. Uh, it's healthy. So I don't, I don't have a huge problem with it, to be honest. I kind of feel at this point, if you're coming to see me, it's because you know who I am. It's not the label of whether I'm a comedian or not a comedian or whether I do TikTok or not TikTok. It, I don't think anybody really cares at this point. Well, certainly I don't. So, um, and like if you want if if you want to come and see me, I'll be I'll be doing me. And uh, I think what's sad is when you see older comedians like me trying to trying to not be old. I think that's that's sad. But I I will not be trying not to be old. I'll just be being whatever age I am, which is sixty years old, which sounds enormously old to me. But I suppose isn't really that much, or maybe it is. I don't know. It is what it is. It's just a number. It, it is just a number, but I mean, are you, are you happy to have made it to 60? You, you've written a lot about uh, your your vices in the so, past that you don't do anymore. I'm, sur I'm surprised to have made it to 60. <laughs> happy? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, I'd rather be here than no not here, I think. I don't know. I've never been anywhere else. Uh, well, for a while. Um, I, no, I, 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 it, it's funny. Turning 50 messed with me a lot more than turning 60. I, turning 50 was horrendous i was like oh my god what am i gonna do but 60 i'm like yeah it's okay you know i'm still here <laughs> still i can mo for the most part still move around and you know i just lucky i think what a lot of it certainly i took for the last couple of years uh of you know this this dreadful covid thing was uh being grateful for for being able to you know suck air in and out and walk around and and just like basic things of life i'm just uh, it's helped me with gratitude. Now, uh, let's see, September 17th is the show. I'm kind of surprised. Again, I, I keep going back to Hobo Fabulous because it was just a, such a great, uh, fun series to watch. Um, Thanks. I'm kind of surprised that uh, your your youngest son, Liam, is not your opening act. Well, the man was fun. <laughs> he was hilarious. Well, you know, I, I, I have been very uh, strict with Liam. He has to go to school. And so he'll be at school. He's in school right now. And also, I don't have an opening act. You know, people do say to me, why why don't you have an opening act? And I say, well, I, I kind of think the thing to do, rather than have an opening act, what I'll do is I'll suck for the first 20 minutes and charge myself a grand. That way, everybody gets the same effect 
without, you know, doing everything else. Oh, oh, no disrespect. No disrespect to anyone who's opened for no, me in the past. <laughs> none, none, uh, none taken. I'm sure by anybody. And uh, I just, I hope Liam has taken the sunglasses off. I don't think he took the sunglasses off the whole series, or at least for the. I, end. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him. That's that's the reason. He's not like sunglasses crazy. I wouldn't let him not wear sunglasses if he was going to be on camera because I said, no, you can't. You're too little to, uh, to have people come over and say I know you because he wouldn't understand it, and um, he doesn't like it when people do it to me. Um, I, I, it's uh, it was for his protection. I made him wear sunglasses gotcha. and a mustache. <laughs> Craig Ferguson at the Egyptian Room, September seventeenth. We'll have the info, ticket info at wrtv.com. Please go check him out uh, if you have not seen him, or even if you have seen him before. Go go see Craig and uh, and the Ramon shirt there. Well, probably not the Ramon shirt. I'm guessing on stage. I doubt I doubt I'll wear it uh, on stage, but you know, you never know. You never know until the night. Never, never can tell. Craig, it's yeah. uh, it's been, it's been so fun watching you and uh, enjoying your stuff over the years and can't wait to see you when you get to town. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Come and say hi at the show, will you?